grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our living Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our consideration this morning is the psalm for the day, this being Good Shepherd Sunday. And the psalm is Psalm 23. We read, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You set a table for me in the presence of my foes. You drench my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sanctify us through the truth. Your word is true. Amen. In Christ Jesus, our good shepherd, dear fellow redeemed. There is a big difference between talking about the gospel and preaching the gospel. Talking about the gospel would be holding it objectively and discussing all of its details. We might look at the nuances of why Jesus had to be true man and true God. For instance, he had to be true God, excuse me, true man, so that he would be under the obligation of the law. And he had to be true God so that he could fulfill that law perfectly. He had to be true man so that he could suffer and die. But he had to be true God, so that his suffering and death would pay for the sins of the whole world. We can talk about how Jesus is the Savior of the world. Talking about the gospel is very different from proclaiming the gospel. Proclaiming the gospel is making it personal, making it subjective. So we can talk about Jesus being the Savior of the world, but if you don't make the connection that that means he's your Savior, the gospel hasn't really been applied. You can talk about Jesus bearing the sins of the world. But if you don't see that it's your sins that he bore. The gospel is talked about that it's not preached. It's not applied to the individual. One of the reasons that Psalm 23 is the favorite psalm is because it doesn't talk about the gospel. It preaches it. It applies it to the individual so that objective truth is owned and grasped. David didn't say the Lord is the shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. God this morning doesn't want to talk to you about the gospel. He wants to preach it to you. He wants you to take that gospel and apply it to yourself so that David's words would become your words. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, that's what God wants you to believe. That's what God wants you to take to heart. The Lord is my shepherd. 
He knows my needs. He is with me. After making that bold statement, the Lord is my shepherd, the first thing that David concluded was, I lack nothing. How true does that statement ring to you? I lack nothing. Maybe you're thinking there this morning, well, there are lots of things in my life that I want. I'm lacking them. So is this statement true? I lack nothing. Well, if you were to look at the things that you want and you don't have, the things that you're lacking, how confident are you that they are good for you? Can you be sure that they would bring the blessing that you think they would? Or would they instead be a curse? This thought that you are lacking is really centered in the idea that God is holding out on you. That he hasn't blessed you as much as what he could or even what he should. But notice what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord the one who knows all things, the one who knows you. David, in another of his psalms, Psalm 139, wrote this, Lord, you have investigated me, and you know. You know when I sit down and when I get up, you understand my thoughts from afar. You keep track of when I travel and when I stay. And you are familiar with all my ways. Before there is a word on my tongue, you, Lord, already know it completely. The Lord knows you. He understands you. He sees what you're thinking. And David even says, before the word is on your tongue, the Lord already knows it. He knows you so intimately, better than you know yourself. He knows your needs. And he satisfies those needs. we have a problem with that statement, I lack nothing. The problem isn't with the Lord. The problem's with us. When we think that we're lacking something, what we're really doing is thinking that God is holding out on us. Our first parents had the same problem. God had made Adam and Eve without a knowledge of evil. And when the thought is presented to Eve about being like God, she really began to believe that God was holding out on her. And that it would be a blessing if she reached out and took that fruit and ate it. She thought that's what she needed. She thought that would be good for her. But oh, was she wrong. When you look at the things that you lack or think you lack, are you sure they would be a blessing? If the Lord knows you, shouldn't you along with David conclude, I lack nothing. The Lord knows you and provides what you need. He wants to 
provide for you in body and soul. He wants to lead you into those green pastures and beside those quiet waters. He wants to restore your soul. And he's demonstrated that so vividly because he was willing to claim all of your discontentment, all of your selfish greed, all of your grumbling against God, all of your self-pity. He was willing to claim all that as his very own. And he suffered and died so that your sins are forgiven. Jesus knew what you needed. You needed someone to take away your guilt. So God became man so he could be under the burden of the law and suffer and die in your place. And God became man so that his suffering and death would be sufficient to pay for all of your sins. God knew what you needed. And the Lord provided. Your good shepherd laid down his life for you. So now you truly lack nothing. Maybe you're there this morning thinking, well, why can't my life be just a little bit more like I want? At least, why can't I get rid of these hardships, these things that I don't want in my life? Even in the midst of hardship, the Lord is still your shepherd and it is still true that you lack nothing. So in those moments of doubt and struggle, where should you turn? You know, the Apostle Paul also had a hardship that he wanted to be rid of. He prayed three times for the Lord to take it away from him. And the Good Shepherd, Jesus, responded, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. When you're struggling in your hardships, when you're wondering if God really sees you and sees what you need, remember His grace. He loves you. He has forgiven all of your sins. He's not blind to you, but He truly sees you and intimately cares for you. He sees you better than you do. So you don't see how your hardship is good for you, but He does. And then He points you to His grace. There is your comfort. Your sins are forgiven. God has made you His child and prepared a place for you in heaven where you will never suffer. You will never hunger. You will never thirst. You will never cry again. His grace is sufficient. Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. But that doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. Notice what David said. He called this life the valley of the shadow of death. Notice also that David didn't say, because the Lord is my shepherd, I'll never have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. God doesn't stand at its entrance and say, oh no, you don't have to go down there, you go that way. No, 
Now God says in this life, we will have trouble. But take heart, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Isaiah said it in a similar way in, in chapter 43. God said, but now this is what the Lord says. The Lord who created you, O Jacob, the Lord who formed you, O Israel, do not be afraid because I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you cross through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not set you on fire. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God doesn't promise us a life of ease. In fact, he promises us the opposite. Our life is going to be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. What a scary, even terrifying name, the valley of the shadow of death. What things in this life scare you? Spiders? Snakes? Illness? Financial ruin? Despair? What makes you afraid? And how do you confront those fears? I know that for me personally, I am most afraid of what's happening in my life when it's outside of my control. Then I'm terrified because I can't do a thing about it. But notice David's comfort. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, the almighty maker of heaven and earth. And he's with me. I may be afraid. I may be paralyzed. Uh, powerless but the Lord is with me and he promises to use his strength for my good even our children grasp this in their simple hymn I am weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me. So when you're afraid, do not be afraid because the Lord is with you. Trust that your good shepherd is right there with you, never leaving you or forsaking you. He will be with you to the end. Jesus said of his sheep, no one can snatch them out of my hand. There he is promising to use his almighty power to guard and protect you so that Satan, even Satan, cannot snatch you out of his hands. So don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. Now maybe you're wondering, how do I know that for sure? Well, just consider this. If Jesus didn't desert you when you were his enemy as a sinner, is there anything greater that could come between you and he? There is no greater offense to God than to disobey his word. And you did that. And yet Jesus did not choose to let you go. Did not choose to be separated from you. 
No, He bridged the gap. He took away your sins. He suffered and died on Calvary so that you would never be apart again. Jesus is with you. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With that last bold statement, David was showing us that God wants to be with us here in time and hereafter in eternity. He comes to you here in time through His Word and sacraments to lift you up, to strengthen you in your faith and to reassure you of His presence and His love. And He will never leave you or forsake. So let us march through this valley of the shadow of death. Confident that our Lord is with us. And that He will see us safely through to the other side. He will see us into His house forever. The Lord is my shepherd. God doesn't want you just to consider that objectively. He wants you to take it to heart. He wants you to make those words of David yours. Jesus knows your needs and provides. He is with you even in the valley of the shadow of death. He is your shepherd. May all that He has done for you convince your hearts of this truth so that your heart would cry out with David, The Lord is my shepherd. To Him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.